want to see Jesus. And we want to be transformed into that same image. From glory to glory. We ask for it. We long for it. And we desire it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, just praying along that line that, and this is one of those things that I think we need reminders. That if that our goal, the goal of our heart, not the goal of our church, the goal of our hearts is to make it about Jesus that he is what it's about, that it's his time, that our hearts are not going to be focused on us in that scripture in 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, it speaks of, of that, that, that when we see him, we will be changed, and that word changed is transformed. Mm -hmm. Much of my Christian life, I've been greatly dealt with by the word transformed compared to what I see happening in most of it. Not just us, everywhere. Transformed. I just want to be transformed, and I want, want us to be transformed. In the scriptures, the wording is changed, changed into that same image, not just changed, not just fixed. God, that's got to be our heart. Not just changed or not just fixed, but changed into that same image. Transform. And um, the scripture I felt like the Lord wanted me to share with you, it's out of Mark chapter 9, and I'll just read it. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining exceedingly white as snow, so as no fuller on earth could wipe them. And there appeared unto them Elijah and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Luke says they were talking about the cross. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he knew not what to say, for they were sore afraid. And, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked around about, they saw no man any more save Jesus only. And I know we're all familiar with these scriptures. That's our problem. We're familiar with these scriptures. And we're so familiar with this stuff that it doesn't impact us. It doesn't create something in us. And, and the very story here, I think, makes that point. The, the fact that, okay, so they're, they're pulled aside by Jesus. Well, isn't that us? Haven't we been pulled aside by Jesus? Pulled aside by Jesus to be with him. That's what it says. To be with him. Apart by themselves. To be apart with Jesus. And the next thing that it says is that he was transfigured before them. Okay? I'm trying to get an order here. They were taken apart. Separated unto him. They were set aside just for Jesus. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Then um, Jesus was transfigured and in, in Luke it says that his countenance was changed. Meaning they were seeing him the way he really is. His countenance was changed. And then this talks about his, his even his garments glowing and 
and then, verse 4 says, and then there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah. Okay, so set apart for Jesus. Jesus begins to be revealed. Jesus begins to be made known at his own bidding and doing. And then Moses and Elijah shows up. And then Peter says this. Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make thee three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. All right. We, were talk we started off in the prayer, and now we started talking about this reality of being able to be in the presence of the Lord and not even realize what it is. So here is Peter, and he is standing there with James and John, and Jesus is not just there, he's transformed in front of them. And what does he notice? What's the big event that happens here? He doesn't really see Jesus transform. He sees Moses and Elijah. Mm -hmm. And Jesus as one of those three standing there. Right? That's I mean, right. if he really saw, he'd go, oh my God! Was Jesus transfigured in front of them? Yes. Yes! And they didn't see it. And they were there for him, but they, but can I say it like this? But they weren't there for him, not in their hearts. Everybody's, we're all there for him, fellowship-wise, as a goal. But our hearts have to be there for him, or if it's not, we're not going to see him. We're just going to see something that's tangible, some event, something with that includes a bunch of people. That's where that's what we're gonna react to. We're gonna go, oh, well let me do something to minister to this. That's right. He didn't say, you know, I'm gonna go hit the bars, or I'm gonna go, you know, I mean, you know, you'd go, oh, this is good, Peter. No, it's not good. Not in light of the time. Not in light of the situation. That's right. Not in light of what Jesus had in his heart when he brought him up there. Not in light of him opening himself. Not in light of the fact that they never saw that. And the scripture that we read there was that Jesus, uh, in, uh, uh, in Corinthians, was that, that when we see him, we will be, we will be changed into that same image. Well, why didn't it happen with Peter? Because he didn't see it. He didn't see the transfigured Jesus. He was still seeing the regular Jesus what? That he knew. That he knew. And so, you know, the Lord, the, the, the Father, this Son is what he, it's all about to the Father. To the Father. So the Father is not going to be happy with that situation. He's going to, he's, because it's about his Son, and he figures, you know, all you're getting out of this is, Jesus, the prophet man, the da 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 da, Elijah, Moses. So he's going to intervene. And it says, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud. Guess whose voice? The Father. <laughs> saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear him. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore. Hmm. Save Jesus only. May I say it like this? If this is our time like it was Peter, James, and John's time to be to to be set apart with Jesus. And this was in the heart of Jesus to open himself to us in ways that we could finally be changed, but not just changed, but changed into his image. And we still continue to only see what we've seen, then the Father's going to intervene. The Father's going to intervene. How is he going to intervene? Whatever it is, 
that we think is so important, whatever it is that we, we think that we see, whatever it is that we think that we see, whatever the things that we think are important to God or important to us, they're going to be gone for all intents and purposes. He's going to take care of that. He can take care of that. Oh, is that your problem? Well, I can take care of that. Is that, is that your issue? I can take care of that. Now, I didn't say he killed off Moses and Elijah and all that, but he, they were, for all intents and purposes, removed so that they could see Jesus on we know that that Peter got it later on, didn't he? In his epistle. He wrote that event. It's one of the only events of the gospels that's written in the New Testament in the in the epistles. He got it. You ought to hear I'm not gonna read it, I'm not gonna belabor this, but you should read it. And you will see that after going back, after spending time with the Holy Spirit, and this, this came to him after the Holy Spirit came, then he realized what he saw. There are, there are some really, really good things that the Lord's going to be sharing with us in the coming days and weeks and months. Every one of us really needs to just Try to wipe away all the Jesus that we know in the sense of just finding that Jesus. Always applying that Jesus. And open our hearts. Open our hearts and say, Lord, you're taking the time to set us aside. You have, and this is what I, I already believe. I believe he's already opened himself to us. We haven't really seen yet the fullness of what that means because because what yeah, because we see the religious thing that, that's before us instead of Jesus transfigured. I mean I was appalled when I realized Peter saw him transform and all he got out of it was maybe I should make some booths for you guys. And and guess what? That's us. Until we realize the heart of Jesus for setting us aside and calling us away, separating us from him, and then say, Holy Spirit, I don't want to just see that thing that I'm familiar with. Let me see Jesus, the Jesus that when I see him, I'll be changed, I'll be transfigured. Isn't that cool? That's what it says, we'll be changed, we'll be transfigured. Jesus was transfigured before then. Well, that's great. But this seeing will transform us into that same image. This seeing will work. Do you believe it? Yeah. I believe it. So I just want to encourage you, and I want you to realize, you know, God's serious about this. I guess I am kind of scared sometimes. But God's serious about this. He is serious. And the Father is, if he has to, See, I mean, he's the one who allowed Moses and Elijah to show up there with Jesus. But when they, they, they didn't remember the transfiguration, only three people getting together and talking. And what were they talking about? Three people talking about the cross. That still wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. Had to be Christ transfigured. That's what the goal was. It's not about us talking about the cross. About us being with him. So let's keep our hearts focused in the midst of this turmoil. And in the midst of the, the things of this world and the things of this life. My prayer, my prayer is for us. Let's just pray. Father, I just pray with all my heart for your shoe, Jesus, your shoe, Jesus your sheep. With all my heart, I cover them. With all the ability that you've given me as a shepherd, I cover them. And I ask, Father, that the Holy Spirit be released even greater, even greater, 
If this is double right now, this is nothing. Double it again. If this is double, this is nothing. Double it again. Bring forth your son in such a manner that we, not just him, is transfigured. We are transformed. But transformed into that same image. That, that, that the seeing that we see of Jesus is not Jesus in the scriptures as people talk about him being crucified. But the Jesus that we see is the one by which we are changed into that same image. No longer Peter, James, and John. No longer I, but Christ. No longer I, but Christ. Father, not just this time at Turner Falls. This is being shared not just for this moment. This is your ongoing word to us keep our hearts quickened, to keep our hearts hungry, to keep our hearts focused, even in the midst of doing many other things. Satan, I bind you from every attack against your people in the name of Jesus, and I resist you, and I command you to flee from them in Jesus' name. And Holy Spirit, move in, move in. Reveal Christ in the, even with the enemy trying to pull off his stuff. Move in and do your most holy work. Take care of these people, Father. Take care of them, Father. Till we all come. Here we are. And one final word that the Lord quickened to me in Esther. <coughs> when all those maidens gathered up at Shushan, and there was Hegai, he he representing the Holy Spirit, he was there, he was there in the midst of all of it. He was there. At, for the longest time while they were gathered there, none of them were bright. I mean, it, yes, that's settled in the heart of God. But we're talking, we're, you know, we're not talking about what's settled in the heart of God. We're, that He's already made us. If we're the church, we're going to be the bride. That's His plan. But we have to realize that in the making of that, in the bringing that to pass in like kind, I guess none of us really are yet Esther. None of us are. <laughs> none of us are. You see what I mean? Because we're all in this together. And, and in that case, they weren't. But in this case, we are. We are. And so I think if we can hold on to the reality, you know, it's like, you know, well, how's this going to turn out? Well, read the end of the book of Revelation. The bride and Jesus get together. You know, okay. We win. It turns out, it's a, it's a love story. It turns out well. You know. But also keep in mind, right now, in the truest sense of what he wants, comes calling bride, none of us, we're all in Shushan and right. waiting and soaking in oils and seeking him together. Does that make sense? Yes. And that'll keep us all, that, that keeps us from judging one another or thinking things about, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't compare ourselves one with another. We just look to Jesus. That's where our heart is going to be. And that's what's going to bring us into that bride heart. One more prayer. So Lord, allow this to filter into all of us in a real way. Give us the assurance of what's at the end of the book of Revelation, but give us the, the oomph to want to, uh, to to come to a place where this manifests in us. 
Lord, if it'll work for us, help us to just acknowledge that none of us yet are that bride or that bride heart yet. But we're all here in Shushan for you. We're all here for the same purpose. And though Esther is just a shadow and, and no shadow fully represents the truth, the spirit of what we have is that we are all one and we are all after the same thing and we will all come because you said it till we all come. And to, to, to what? The measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. We will be after his kind because it will be him formed in us. We believe it, we embrace it, we love you, and we embrace one another in Jesus' name. Amen. All right.